I think it sort of arose out of, um, well, sort of a kind of saturation in our youth of music that we had. And also because, you know, at one point I was a DJ for a very small amount of time and collected a lot of vinyl records, which he then took um, and systematically, without asking me. I listened to a lot of different types of music and always have done. Uh, listening mostly to David's records first because I was a younger brother. Our other older brother James, also a music fanatic. So he was listening to a lot of jazz fusion in the 80s. Jazz is probably the connection. I became much more interested in electronic music and then through electronic music I also became very interested in conceptual music. Uh, I spent most of my 20s DJing in clubs because I came after my degree in engineering, in, um, in mathematical engineering, I basically became a DJ, signed to a label called Moax, the scene that started of electronic music, basically, electronic British music. When David gave me a drawing for the asymmetric, I instantly knew what kind of sound he was talking about. He drew a drawing of a sound, I think a sound journey. He showed me the space and he told me about the dimensions and the kind of experience he wanted to have in there. And straight away, I kind of, I felt a very strong premonition of what kind of sounds would, would, would make that uh, space come alive in terms of the materials. I was really taken um, aback by the recycled materials that David was using. They were very, very rough exteriors. I basically decided to use an instrument, uh, koto, a Japanese instrument, which is very woody sounding. So I wanted it to have a very kind of wood-like wood response. I think that people are overly obsessed with the visual in architecture, that it, it for me, at its most successful, is not really about the visual markers, but about the way in which it lifts up people. And I think that that's a kind of sensorial, multi-sensorial experience. So Dirty House is a soundtrack, not a sound installation. So the sound doesn't exist in the house. But I was inspired by the actual building and the, the aesthetics and the reasoning behind the building. And the music tries to have a duality to it. From the outside, Dirty House to me, it's kind of brooding, it's dark, it's got this sort of uh, anti-graffiti paint, it's got these sort of uh, one-way uh, windows where you can only see from the inside but you can't see in. It's quite sort of foreboding and the music starts off quite like that. If you go into the space, it's quite light. It's got a lot of high ceilings and very playful and, uh, and the music starts to have that kind of bit of a disco beat actually. Hearing a composer or a musician play back what they think they're seeing or what they're feeling is a really very, very powerful thing for um, an architect anyway to, 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 to receive. I don't know, the National Museum of African American History and Culture is the latest sort of building that I'm working on and completes this year. And it would be amazing to see what you would make of that soundtrack. <laughs> I think there's a commission here. Yes, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's live on camera and this is great. We just... I'd, obviously, I would, I would love to. It's an incredible building, and, the, and of course, the actual ex experience that it's, it's, it's showing, the Afro-American experience, is vast. And from everything we've spoken about, from the influence that we love, invariably, a lot of it does come through at the Afro-American experience. So, as a commission, it would be an incredible um, challenge, which I would, I would love to do. And actually, without telling Dave, I've already started composing it. <laughs> <There you go. laughs>